Hi, I'm Stefano Tempesta and I'm a proud member of the European SharePoint community. In this video, you will learn how to write code to perform basic operations with the SharePoint.NET client object model, CSON, and build an SP.NET MVC application that receives information from a SharePoint server. Let's start by creating a new SP.NET web application project in Visual Studio. We give a SharePoint MVC name and we select the template empty of type MVC. As this application will connect to a SharePoint server, we need to reference the CSOM SharePoint libraries. The uh, best way to do that is using new get, add a reference and search for microsoft.sharepoint.client and microsoft.sharepoint.client.runtime. For those of you used to Entity Framework, accessing SharePoint can be implemented in a similar way. Let's create a SharePoint context class, let's make it disposable and implement the disposable pattern. Then all we need to do is to obtain a reference to the SharePoint client context in the SharePoint client library. All the client context needs is the URL of the SharePoint site to which the MVC application is connecting. Conveniently, this URL is stored in the web config and accessible via static variable inside the SharePoint context class. Because client context extend the client runtime context, which is disposable, we need to dispose the SharePoint context properly. The MVC application that we want to build connects to a SharePoint site and displays a discussion list by category. For the purpose, I'm using a SharePoint site created with a community template, so I have the following list already available, categories and discussion list. I also create a new entry in the discussion list by entering subject, body, question and picking a category. We now need a controller for our MVC application. We give a name default controller and we add a view for the index action. As for entity framework, I want to use a SharePoint context here to access my categories in the index action and the discussion list in the discussion action. Obviously, I still don't have the categories, so I need to define them. Let's start creating our first model, the category model. I add a class, I name it category, obviously, and I enter the properties that identify a category, the ID, the name, and the description. The same I do for the discussion, but Let's try to remember what are the properties of a discussion. So there is a subject, there is a body, there is a question, which is a boolean value, and a category is a drop-down list. And here I create my model discussion with a subject, a body, its question, and a category property. Now I can add my models as enumerables to my SharePoint context and create some private methods for loading categories and discussion list respectively. Now that I have my category, I can go back to the index action and complete my link expression, ordering categories by name, passing the collection to the view and then implementing the view. So I define a model as an enumerable of my category and then display the categories as an order list. I also want to create an action link for each category. When clicking on the name of the category, I call the discussion action in the default controller, passing as a route value the category name. So back to the controller, 
I now introduced the discussion action, which accept a category as an input parameter. Same approach, I use the SharePoint context and retrieve the discussion list from the context. The SharePoint list is now returning me all the discussions for a specific category because I apply again another link filter. It's time now to add the discussion view and I use the list scaffolding template for displaying all the discussions in a table. Because this is a read-only table, I can remove all the actions for editing and modifying the existing discussion list items. Back to my discussion action, I want to improve the readability of the URL of this action by changing to a custom route and I do so by specifying an attribute and map the attribute route in the route config class. We can have a look now to the load categories method in the SharePoint context more in detail. So what we need is to obtain a reference to the web, which is the current site in SharePoint, then load the list and execute the query. It's always important to execute a query on the object to load. I can then access the specific list by title and query again all the items in the list using a camel query. In a very similar way, the load discussion list method access the context to obtain a reference to the current site, then open a list, the discussions list by name, by title, and for each list item, then create an instance of our discussion model. This is my MVC application running, presenting a list of categories, and for each category, as I click on the category name, I see a list of all the discussions available in SharePoint. This is retrieving information in real time directly from the SharePoint server. And in summary, a few tips for integrating your MVC application with SharePoint. Load the site from your client context first using the combination of load and execute query. Then load the list, uh, searching for list by title and after you actually obtain a reference to the list, you can access the list properties. And for list items, it is necessary to load again and execute the query against the list item collection. The last reference is to the list item properties. Once the list item collection has been loaded and the query has been executed, then all the properties of the list items are accessible and can be used in your code. That's all for this video. I hope you have enjoyed it and if you have any questions, please feel free to contact me. Ciao!